Hi, Jose de la Portilla here. Thanks for tuning in to Toolbox Tuesday. Today we're going to review the RLD-1 refrigerant leak detector made by Amprobe. Some quick specifications is this is a leak detector that's designed for HCFC or HFC refrigerants. For example, R134A, uh, 404A, 407, 410A, R22, etc. Now, what's its sensitivity? They always tell you you should have a leak detector that can calculate leaks as low as half an ounce a year. Well, when we look at this one, it says on high setting it can detect three grams of leak, refrigerant leak per year. And what does that come out to in ounces? Well, that's like 0.0353. Uh, I think this is much more accurate than the industry standard we tell you to shoot for. Uh, it's a pretty neat meter. Uh, it's got a lot of really neat features built into it. Um, it can run on batteries, have an uh, independent electrical charger, so if your batteries are dead, you can plug it into an extension cord. It's got LED display, it's got sound uh, audio display, so you can hear and see the leak as well. It does have some warm-up time, but you know, and, and it automatically powers off after 10 minutes in case you forget to shut it off. But instead of just sitting and telling you about it, let's crack it open and see what it looks like. So just going to remove that cover there, slide that and get that out of our way. Comes in a pretty nice rugged case, so nice size, should fit in your toolboxes pretty well or in the back of your truck pretty well. Some clasps that will hold it open or hold it closed. And when you open it up, you'll see what you've got here. You've got the refrigerant leak detector, the flexible snake wand that goes to it. Inside this rubberized case here is the sensor. You've got a couple of C-cell batteries so you can do it battery operated. Uh, personally, whenever possible, I like to use them plugged into the wall. I know that I have a solid power source there that's not going to drop. Remember with batteries, as they age, their voltage potential starts to drop. So instead of being one and a half volts, they're 1.2 volts, 1.1 volts. And whenever the voltage drops, your accuracy and your sensitivity, it, it tends to go off and you stop making great measurements. It also has the secret mystery vial of leak check serum. Really what this is, is is it seems like a piece of material in here that's uh, saturated with some refrigerant that allows you to pick up a reference leak point. So we'll use that to test it uh, before we actually go out and make our leak, our leak detections. Taking it out of the box, it is a, got a plastic case, so it seems pretty rugged, pretty durable. You've got your on button here, your reset button here to reset it from ambient conditions, and you can switch from low to high sensitivity. You'll hear an audio beep and you'll actually see the colors on this LED change as you get closer and closer to the source of the leak. Now the wand itself is pretty flexible. Obviously you don't want to overstress it. And in the end of this here, this rubberized case, is our actual sensor here. And the instruction manual will tell you how often you should replace that sensor. And it'll give you a part number. Um, whether that's a year, two years, three years, whatever it is, refer to the installation manual. We're not going to dive into that today. But every leak detector that you buy will have a life expectancy on the sensor, so know that. If you've got one bouncing around in your truck for five to ten years, uh, it could have a bad sensor and it could be giving you false readings. That might be why you're having a hard time checking for leaks. Always keep the cover back on because this rubberized case is designed to keep dirt, debris, and moisture out that would give you false readings or damage the sensor. So let's go ahead and get it started up here. We're going to go ahead and do batteries for the purpose of this video so we can show you how it goes in. So it's got one Phillips screw in the back that we can take loose to get to the battery cover compartment. Let's pull that loose. You just kind of slide the batteries in like so. And put the cover back in. Now, Amprobe makes some pretty durable stuff, but just like any meter, they're sensitive to drops, smacks, and bangs and are being banged around. So I would recommend you always keep this thing in its traveling case when you're not in use. Otherwise, when you're using it, that's okay. It's okay free to have it loose. But always keep it packaged in its case. Just don't throw this in the back of a bucket or in another tool bag. It needs some protection just because it's a sensitive piece of electronics. So let's show you what happens when you power it up. You see the LED light staging here going up to down? This is because it's sensing any refrigerant in the atmosphere. So if you're in an area that's had a refrigerant leak and you need to power this up, it's going to start up. Look for initial refrigerant levels and then zero those out. 
Um, so it's a good idea to make sure you let it go through its 45 second warm up cycle to make sure it zeroes out any uh, background refrigerant that isn't the leak that you're looking for. I wouldn't necessarily run outside to a fresh air environment, just turn it on because then when you come into the area of the mechanical room where the leak's in place, it'll pick up that background refrigerant leak that might have been accumulating in there. So always start it up in the area you're working in and let it go through its warm-up cycle. With a double beep there and that one green indicator light, now we're ready to start looking for the leak. To switch from low sensitivity to high, it's as simple as pushing the button. High gives you the indication of showing you all the way up here we're on high sensitivity. I always start on high sensitivity to find the general area of the leak. Then I switch to low to pinpoint the exact area of the leak. So, with this in hand, we're ready to go make some measurements. But let's talk about refrigerant leaks for just a second to explain what kind of leaks there are and why we would be looking for them. The first and most obvious leak would be a standing leak. That's going to be a poor braze connection, a loose fitting, something where there's just refrigerant leaking. We'll pick that up. Now, some leaks in an HVAC system are pressure dependent, meaning that if the system's in the off mode, you won't see the leak because the pressure's dropped to a lower, more stable level. If it's on the high side of the system, once it turns on, and if you're dealing with a refrigerant like R410A and pressures get up to 350, 400 pound range, maybe it's when it gets that high that the metal expands enough that we start finding our leak. Now, some leaks are temperature dependent, so it might take the system five to 10 minutes of runtime before you'll pick up the leak. If it's a temperature dependent leak, let it run for a few minutes. This way the metal will expand and contract in the right order and you'll find where the leak is. Other leaks are completely vibration sensitive or vibration dependent. So maybe you've got a compressor and there's a reversing valve right next to it. When the system's off, there's no vibration so the metal's stuck together. But maybe when the compressor comes on and the vibration starts, that one piece starts to separate. So those are the main types of leak that you want to look at. Remember when we're testing for refrigerant leaks, that refrigerant is heavier than air, so it's going to fall to the floor. So it's a good practice if you're checking to start below the fittings because that's where the leak's going to go first and then work your way around. So enough being said on the product and the unboxing and how to check for leaks. Let's go actually check a unit for a leak and see what it does. So now let's go ahead and use the leak detector to see if we can pick anything up. We're working on a residential system in a horizontal application. We see a liquid line, a suction line, a TXV. I'm going to show you a trick about the drain line as well. Okay. So we've got the meter set on. It's set to high detection. And if you wanted to check for a leak in the suction line, a simple way to do it is find a split in the Armaflex and go right in. Now I'm on high sensitivity. Picked up a little something there, but I'm not really seeing anything. Oh, there's a warning. A little bit of refrigerant gas in this area, but it's not screaming. So I don't know if that's the area. Come down and scan the liquid line. Now I'm picking something up, so let's switch to low sensitivity to see if we can pinpoint exactly where the leak's coming from. Closer. There we go. Right at the top of that flare nut that compression nut. We can come back in and fine tune it again and see. Bring it away. Come back in for a check. There's our sensing right there. So it looks like we got a loose flare nut. We could tighten that down. You can also see a little bit of oil stain if you look close, so there's a visual indication. Tighten it up. But what about these evaporator coils? Sometimes these leak, right, due to formicary corrosion and other environmental concerns. Well, most of the time when you see these in an attic or a basement, they're all sealed up. Well, if you wanted to tear it open to check for a leak, you'd have to tear the whole thing apart, cut off all the mastic. Well, what if you were to just take your leak detector and check right down the drain line? Hmm. There's a warning, there might be a little bit of a refrigerant leak in that coil. Now the key here is don't go all the way down the pipe because you don't want to get stuck in the water and ruin your sensor. Just to make sure it wasn't just the heavier refrigerant falling into the pipe, I'm going to let it breathe for a minute. Go back down. Yeah, pick up a little bit. 
but I think that's mostly the ambient refrigerant that was floating around. So the flexible wand gives you the ability to do that. Come in underneath the fittings, check for leaks, check for all the areas. So combine the Amprobe RLD1 with good leak detection processes and procedures, and you're going to find those refrigerant leaks you need. Thanks for tuning in to Toolbox Tuesday, and we'll see you next time.